everyone. Today's theme, justice. Say it with me, justice. justice. What are we going to be talking about? Probably not that. It's a creative <laughs> moment. Anyway, Sam and Chris and Selena and just us. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Right. So we'll start with me. Oh, God. Jesus. It's a lot of me talking. Nice. <laughs> you love it. You should come to my one-woman show where I also sing and play the harp. It happens on the 10th of September in the moon. Thank you. There will be a plug for the end of it, and I expect to see every single one of you people there. Oh, who are we? Um, now, Skip. We'll come back to it. Chris. Oh, my goodness. It's Ryan Gosling. <laughs> who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? So I'm Crystal Bell. You can call me Chris or however I go by uh, he, they pronouns and um, I run Hey Mary uh, which is a LGBTQ plus and friends uh, club night and we have a bit of drag and a bit of disco we just call it queer drag discotheque it's fun and I also do a bit of DJing by the name of Sissy Boy Tears and I'm 35 Ooh. And not single. You made it. Yeah. That's um, uh, mm, right, we have questions later that we'll get into. Right, Selena, our dear sweet friend Selena, give it a round of applause. Give, we'll do some clapping. I am leading. This is terrible. Uh, Selena, who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? I'm Selena. I'm dumb, so we're gonna bat that out right now. <laughs> I'm a power bottom with IBS. <laughs> so um, I um, I am the director of a social enterprise called Orgy, which is uh, it's centered around a cafe and it's run entirely by people on the autism spectrum, including myself. So all of the, the both of the directors, myself and Frankie, all of our staff are all uh, autistic. And um, we, well, I'll talk a bit more about that later, but we're also like entirely like queer run as well. It just so happens to be that all of us are LGBTQ plus all this other stuff. And so, <laughs> and so, yeah, it's, uh, we're, I'm going to tell you more about that in a bit, but oh, I am 37, I know, black Woo! and brown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Boss. laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you're in for a tonight. <laughs> Should I do me? Oh, hello. <laughs> I know, but I didn't say any of my things. People are like, who is this woman? <laughs> Katrin is, but that's like the only person. Hello, I'm Sam Hickman. I am a singing harpist. I'm also the co-founder of Cardiff Trans Singers. I'm also an icon, a legend, and a trailblazer, but <laughs> that's just me. Right, Justice is, oh, should we say what we put on our name tags? So everyone had a name tag, yes? Yes. And everyone filled out what the name tag was, yes? What did you put as your justice is? I thought that justice is lifting people up with you as you climb. Oh. That's sexy. That's really sexy. Sexy is what we got. What did you put? Um, justice is starting with us. Yay! I put farts. <laughs> Of course you did. Trailblazer, icon, <laughs> feminist hero, Sam Hickman. Thank you. Right, so we wanted to talk about a couple of things. Um, if you think this is good, imagine me, but with prepared jokes. It's really good. Um, and a harp and a headdress. Um, so we wanted to talk mainly about like building communities and finding spaces and creating safe spaces and what you do when you kind of create a creative project um, and you are kind of othered by society or you are in some way like in like I don't know like like you're you're not the kind of cis normative heteronormative like white mainstream culture and you kind of create something and then like what that looks like in the world but also what it looks like when people see it and the kind of audiences that that attracts so we're going to start with building communities and like the way in which we have tried to build communities as wonderful people who do things <laughs> You want to start? Because you have notes. Okay. Because <laughs> you're prepared. <laughs> I just came to look pretty. <laughs> Don't laugh. It's so mean. Wow. 
You could cheer or something. <laughs> silence. Silence. Utter silence. I hate these people. <laughs> Okay, so, sorry, what was the question? Building communities, <laughs> it's on the thing! Building communities, okay, so, um, I, so the way that I'm going to start about this, you'd have to forgive me if I stumble over my words, I do have anxiety, and I'm slightly freaking out, but it's okay, so just bear with me. It'll be fine. Yeah, I know it's... Yes, yeah. this, is, this is what we're creating. So I'm just putting it out there just in case. So um, building community for me, um, like, I don't know if you saw our bios when the whole thing came out. Um, when we were exposed. <laughs> <laughs> to, well, anyway. Um, so, um, building community for me was just trying to find a place where I could fit in yeah. and find people who are like me because I grew up in Bridgend and in the late 90s, mid late 90s when I was a teenager and just coming out, I was alternative and I just used to go to kind of like uh, new metal gigs and punk gigs and what have you and because that was the music that I was really into and I thought wow I've, I can got this community that I can hang out with but then even within that community like people were threatened by me being openly gay queer faggy person and people would be like what are you doing here you don't like this music or why are you hanging out with our girls it's like they're my friends um, but then I also like the music and and it just felt like I didn't fit in there because I was kind of like a, a threat to their masculinity because that was their space and I was there but not uh, a, a, a female girl uh, or but I was just there as a gay boy teenager and so when it came to making Hey Mary, how did you build so, community around that? So, yeah, thanks for pulling I'm me. leading, I'm steering <laughs> the ship and I'm drunk. Oh no! It's like the Titanic. <laughs> Near, um, far, I'm attention seeking whore. <laughs> oh, wonderful. You're um, welcome, you can clap, but never mind. <laughs> so with, with regards to that then, um, okay, progress uh, quite a few years later. Um, I found myself then in Cardiff and uh, I met a bunch of queerdos and just I started hanging around with lesbians because they were into the music that I was into and they accepted me and we created a community and as we get older and we develop they kind of settled down but I was like no I still want to party and then created Hey Mary, which I found was a bit of a void within Cardiff uh, because you've only got your bog standard like LGBT, like gay bars basically, which are predominantly white cisgendered men. You don't see any uh, women, you don't see any trans people. Um, it's just not that great like if you feel like an outsider within your own community anyway so then i started hey mary so we could kind of just build on that and that's eventually what happened yeah. three years later and your show your drag show that you put on is really really diverse like you have just the full range of everyone who could ever think about doing drag how did that come about so at the beginning i just asked one drag queen who asked another drag, a baby drag queen to come about, uh, come along and perform and then we built on that and then we noticed that loads of people would come to Hey Mary in drag um, just because they felt like they could be themselves and dress up and just have fun and we started seeing that a lot of uh, female identifying people would come in and there was one day like there's this term within the community called like a bio queen but then it, which is slightly problematic and we don't don't really have a well they're, they're a drag queen basically but they're female identified and then we asked 
uh, we asked her to come and perform to give her this platform to try. Who was it? Chris the Wolf. Oh. Your favourite. My favourite. And so she came um, along and then other um, younger queer people were like, oh, I'd really like to try and experiment with drag. And um, I was like, this is the platform. This is this is here for you, we're, we're here for you, you're here for us, we couldn't exist without each other, so here's a stage, give it a go, see if it's something that you're into. And then that kind of developed into our own little kind of drag community and, yeah. Ah, round of applause. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Aubergine. It was a long time coming, wasn't it? Aubergine was a long time coming, yeah. yeah. There was, um, if I just take you back to a moment where Aubergine, or uh, I say Aubergine, but there's a reason for uh, where it was incepted, where the idea kind of came from. I was working in um, a hostel for adults with substance misuse um, difficulties. And um, I was great with the clients, but for some reason there was just this, this thing with my manager, there was the, the way that she micromanaged me and put lots of pressure on me. And it was around the time when I got my autism diagnosis as well, and she kind of took that to be this like massive thing and I kept sending me to occupational health to ask the occupational, uh, to ask the doctor how they can best support me. Um, and I said, well I know how to best support me, I've worked with autistic people like for years and years, I can I can point you in the right direction and to the right organisations, but they were like not listening to me and kept sending me back to occupational health when the doctor didn't say what they wanted to hear. Um, and in the end, I just ended up having this like serious like meltdown at work, left with a head injury that day, uh, and I never went back. Um, and I remember bro broadcasting to my friends on the internet, <laughs> as, as one does with their dirty laundry these days. Um, and like, do you know what, what the problem is with working and being autistic? It's not that I'm autistic, it's that everyone else isn't. It would just be so much more efficient if everyone was, and you can communicate more clearly. And a friend piped up and said, well, why don't you, why don't you do that? Why don't you just start a business? And I was like, huh. And I fucking did it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah. It did take it did take a few years. It took because you know I'm autistic. I like to research the shit out of everything. <laughs> so it took me a long time to kind of like come up with it. But in the end, this year we ended up sort of putting it on trial. Uh, we tried out a space for seven weeks in High Street Arcade. That's just come to an end now. We're looking for a space in Riverside where we feel it be more part of the community. Um, we've had. There's spaces as well, we can talk about buildings and stuff. Right, okay. So we'll talk about buildings and spaces and stuff. So yeah, so that's that's how that's how that's come about. It just so happens that all of us are queer as well. Um, and that most of us, all of us I think who work there at the moment are pretty well versed in um, in social justice issues. So we make it a really important thing to us to always keep in mind like how are we making sure that this we're working for the community and we are a part of the community instead of just being a you know a business that wants to make lots of, lots of money we'd like to make lots of money but we are a community interest company so the money that we make uh, after our salaries one day we'll get paid please all uh, after our salaries we'll go back into the business um, at the moment it's all going back into the business so I don't see it Penny, but <laughs> but um, we've got big plans to make it like a real community space because we've had some really good observations, which I think I'll talk about in a little bit. We've had some great kind of incidental observations, I think. How did you find, like, how did you build your team? How did you find your community? Um, what was like the most useful tool? What did, what did you do in order to be like, oh, hey, friend, you're also like me. Let's work. A lot of it was 
I think it's similar to something that you said earlier, I'm not sure whether you said it in this panel, but you said it to me, about being open and present, present being a sort of like, almost like a, a lighthouse, a beacon for other people to come and go, oh, there's that Selena, that's the one who always talks about autism and this and that, and they come to me with the last few questions, and um, I end up being this agony art, you should see my inbox, my messages, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, never everyone sees books. And I think that just being open, like, talking about it, um, doing, do, it's almost like a, it's kind of like a personal sort of public opinion campaign. If that makes sense. Yes. So like helping to sway public opinion. Yes by normalising talking about autism or mental ill health or being queer or furries or whatever people want to do. <laughs> no, I'm talking about it. We're just frantically nodding. We're like, and piss play. <laughs> <laughs> I've ruined this, sorry. I'm going to go there. But piss play too, yeah, sure. I mean, talking about it, normalising things, I think, I think it really makes it... Being that kind of apparently confident person that people can yeah. kind of approach and want to come and be part of something with you is, is yeah. really important. And you can do that like either as a person or as a business, an organisation, a group, yeah. which is a, a Facebook group, but, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how, but sort of like creating that sort of community just... By showing it. By showing it, yeah, yeah by demonstrating it, yeah. Yeah. Can I can I say something? Yes, of course you can. I found it really interesting the other day that someone said to me that oh, they, they call me a community leader, and I was like, what? It's like I'm just doing my thing, yeah. and and then like we were saying like about uh, being just existing and being this beacon that we draw the people to us, and then we can then create that community with it, and it's like not a community, I don't see myself as a community leader, we're all community leaders. If everyone here who's here now, we're, we're, we're having this discussion and we can then take away from this and be leaders ourselves within our own community. So, and it's, there's no ego with it, I don't think, it, with community. <laughs> well. <laughs> Only me, sorry. <laughs> Change my LinkedIn bio to social entrepreneur. Ah, Do it. right. Should we next next slide? <laughs> ah, nobody is free until we're all free. You said this. I did say this. Yeah, this is one of those things that I kind of like. I kind of always say, um, like some. There are a lot of people who are single issue campaigners. And that's fine, because some issues really do need that much energy and effort. Me. But it doesn't mean... <laughs> I need a date for my brother's wedding next year. Just <laughs> single issue. <laughs> I heard the eye roll. <laughs> Collective eye roll. I like the old people. So, I'm just train of thought, just where am I? Single issue. Single issue campaigns, yeah. So um, when, when, so I'll just give you an example. So I'm running a, an autism cafe. It's a competitive high street cafe. It just so happens to be run by people who are autistic. But people kind of like were like, hmm, it's going to be vegan. Won't that be a bit niche? Yeah, niche. Oh, yeah, that's the name they tell everyone. Yeah. Do you know what? It's worth like a fucking dream. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. You can sort. You can demonstrate that you can care about more than one issue at a time. Absolutely. We kind of we want to move to Riverside because there are a larger number of people of colour there and we want to be in the community where people can come along. But we've deliberately made our signature signature dish a family recipe of mine because my family's Jamaican. So it's a Jamaican vegan mutton curry and it's amazing. You really should try it. Uh, it is good, you have it. So it's good. So so I spilled it all over my dress and yeah, I did yeah. not care. <laughs> um, oh. um, but we've deliberately done that because there's this idea that veganism is a white thing. You know, but like people of colour, black people have been eating plant-based foods for like centuries and centuries. It's not a white convention. So we're like, oh, okay, you come to a vegan cafe, you're expecting 
avocado and quinoa. <laughs> and lentils. And lentils. Not a lentil in sight. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, I... Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, single issue campaigns, I think they're great as long as you don't forget the other campaigns. But this idea of like nobody's free until we're all free. I like to think of like things like the suffragette movement. It gets praised an awful lot, but it was a really racist movement. You know, black people were black women were not allowed to march. They were told not to. They did anyway. You know. So I mean, that's not to say that like just because I don't know some some people might say oh it's stitch rebellion or not not really doing things the way I do. Well, they're still doing important work. If you think that they're kind of like, if it's too white, then get a crowd of black people and go, you know, I mean, as long as the risk isn't that you're all going to get arrested because you're black. I'm very that happens. Um, but yeah, so, so like these black women marched with the suffragettes anyway. They were told not to march by the white women because the white women were like, no, 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 we'll get our rights first and then we'll like come back for you. Like, that never happens. Unless you're like, I mean, there's no, I don't think In there's sync any point. In the Backstreet Boys or whatever. Didn't Eminem do something? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Justin Timberlake? Yeah. Didn't he like win American Idol and then come back with his band? Oh, right. Okay, there we go. So we I'm a pop culture. That's the only example. I, I've got an, another example of what you were saying as well. Because uh, when feminism came out, um, it was just all about heterosexual women and lesbians weren't involved and then they, they were like, we're going to join in and they called themselves the Lavender Menace and Lavender now is still classed as, as a very, very queer colour and it's yeah. one of my favourite colours even though I just wear black pretty much all the time but um, yeah, that was one little tidbit I wanted to chuck in there yeah. my two pence <laughs> Lavender Menaces Great. Do you want to finish your thing before, before we all just interrupted you? Uh, right, yeah, so I think um, some... Um, We're not all free. Don't punch down, basically. Yeah. Don't punch down on people. With feminism, support trans women. Because, I mean, trans people are like 1% of the population. So it's why focus all of your energy on attacking trans women when you can attack the patriarchy. And and um, like and corp uh, corporate culture, which like celebrates maleness. And, you know, so like if if you're gonna do uh, a big demonstration show off the city centre, don't do it right outside all the arcades where they're all independent businesses. <laughs> Go to Cardiff Bay and block the car park for people getting to be for people to be able to get out to work or something like that. Do something that's actually going to hurt the hurt the big guys, yeah. And not be punching down on the little people who need that to survive, you know? There we go. Yeah. So nobody's free until we're all free and um, that links in like when when you rise and lift people up with you. Yeah, that's that's yeah, I also yeah. feel like single, like <laughs> single issue campaigning usually like robs a lot of people of their intersections as well. It's like you can only be one thing. Right, places and spaces. Now we get to talk about places and spaces. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> wow, this half of the room doing good. This half could work on it. <laughs> See me later. Right, places and spaces. Spaces. You did spaces. You have a space. So you guys were famously in 10 feet tall and then you moved to Mary's. So, yeah. Um, this is Hey Mary for those of you who have yeah. not caught up yet. <laughs> um, again, spaces, they're really important. Like physical spaces. Creating this, like this space, this is important where we can have a chat. It's, it's gay now. Everyone here is gay now. <laughs> just, just for like the next. Or at least trans. 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was like a fog when you entered, I'm sorry. It's like chemtrails. Yeah. <laughs> we just threw confetti at people. We're, 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 we're like, you may get hate crimed in the street, I'm sorry. Right. Spaces and places. Spaces, yeah. spaces. and places. Spaces and places. Who so. are they? Where do we find them? <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Hey, so, Mary. Hey, Mary. Um, so I started a Hey, Mary. Well, spaces and places has always been like a big thing that I've always been interested in. Like I said, with my little uh, spiel earlier about when I was a youngster trying to find my space. And then when I, was into uni when I went to university, I met other queerdos like me. And then we just went off and just created our own little space. And we started off in chapter by a night called Peppermint Patty. I don't know if anyone has heard of it. And basically that was when we, um, so the criteria for, it was a band night. And your band that had to play had to be made up of at least 60% uh, uh, female or female presenting. And this was back when I was 19, so six, this was 16 years ago, which at the time I think it was like pretty progressive because we're still struggling to get that kind of representation now. And then from doing that then... 2004. Yes, yes. I did the math. <laughs> Diane Bibbs. Thank you. <laughs> and um, so then we did that and like Chapter was a lovely place and he allowed us to do that. And it was from getting involved through there because I started off as just like a, a, a flyer person and then I started doing the door and then I started doing tech, then artist liaison. So I was getting this like kind of background knowledge of like, okay, so we've got this and my links with feminism and then what about trying to make it a bit more queer and as we said, like the intersection. Building a community. And intersection, intersectionality. Our that favorite thing. buzzwords. <laughs> And then going out there then and being like, okay, so within the gay scene, because it is just gay men, um, uh, we then wanted to carve out our own space. So we started off in Big Top, which is, I don't know if anyone's heard of Big Top? It's, um, if you haven't, it's um, above uh, 10, 10 feet tall. It's pretty tiny space and we started throwing parties in there uh, then uh, so it'd be DJing with some other people and then just drags and it was kind of like a house party basically but it was very expensive spot and people the only people who would come were people who knew about it and and it was quite hard then to keep that space coming. Am I going off on track? Off track? You're getting there. This is places and spaces. You're exactly on track. Okay. Right. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, um, so we did that for like quite a few years. Ooh, okay. That's okay. We didn't need it. And then, um, and then we. <laughs> Can I get another gin and tonic, please? <laughs> Just and then, um, so we did that for a couple of years, and then we found that there was like a proper appetite for. Um, for a space like this, for people to just like come and make friends and I like to think I'm a pretty um, approachable person. Like, I don't know if you've seen that picture with me when I'm just like this. I think I look like a knob. And, An academic um, gay. I'm far from it. She wrote a book. <laughs> yeah, this book. Yeah. Just notes. Um, and Pizza journal. I am quite... Uh, What's it called? Uh, I, I think I'm a approachable person, and I'd introduce people would come, and I'd introduce them to everyone else, and it was it was beautiful just to see all these like lovely queers just gathering together and just wanting to be friends. And I had people coming up to me who were like, "I've realised that like." I am non-binary is confirmed within me by coming to coming to your space, and I was like, no, it's our space. But coming to this space and feeling like I can leave the house to express my gender in any way that I want, and anyone there can just, I can, there's no judgment, and and then we we you moved to Mary's. We moved to Mary's, which. It's a bigger venue, but unfortunately, we do just get random people walking in off the streets. We, it's St. Mary Street. Yeah, yeah. and it's St. Mary Street. And it's something and that... Parties. I, I, well, they kind of <laughs> not... I think with, with us doing Hey Mary and Mary's, it's, we do get... On Mary Street. On St. Mary Street. We do get a lot of uh, like standard footfall coming in. Um, and we can't control that because the venue have been really nice to allow us to um, have the space for free. 
and um, but then and we still get our like core crowd our core family um, and then we get to expose like our queerness and our space to other people who do just walk in off the street but then sometimes some people might be a little bit problematic or they'll stare too much and this is something that I'm still learning myself about even though I like to think I'm creating safe spaces it's always something yeah. more that we can do and progress and listen to each other about making things better because you can't just rest on your laurels yeah I think within I th spaces yeah and I think one of the good things about Hey Mary's at Mary's is that it is like very very diverse queerness in a kind of mainstream mm. cis gay space which Taking I think is space. like yeah and I think it exposes a lot of that clientele and a lot of the general public to like a huge range of drag that they wouldn't see otherwise and I think that's really like that's important work because mm. otherwise it's just like an an old drag queen mm. belting and I am telling you or Shirley um, Bassey yeah or there you go like and I think that's like a really I, I think that's your walked in the job. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. And, and again, like, even though I don't do drag or anything like that, I, I just, I'm, I'm the DJ. But then even with the music that I play, it's like, I, I like to think of it as part, queer party music. And predominantly all the, um, the musicians I play are queer identifying or... Uh, uh, Women. Yeah, female identifying. So that's my piece. Yeah, clap. Cool. I'm taking it too much. Oh. Very nice. Effectively, a space within a place. A yes. space within a place. Because you, really? you don't necessarily need to have a fixed place to have a space. Like, we've created a space here today, you know? Yeah. You can have an online space, is that one? You can have a cafe. Okay. That's, That's the my house. Place. Yeah. What's the space? Should we like cliff notes this as we have 15 minutes and I okay. have... Yeah. So, um... We'll, we'll do more of you next slide. <laughs> so, what is the next slide? Aubergine, um, spaces and places. Okay, yeah, so... I think um, the audience is next, which is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we, so we decided to do a pop-up, see how it went. It's gone incredibly well. We, we, put, we put a poster up for a part-time uh, staff Remember, we had over 100 applications. Remember, these are all autistic people. Over 100 autistic people applied within three days. Wow. We had to close it. <laughs> we had to close it. <laughs> and like, I was replying to everyone going, remember, we're autistic too, and this is just really overwhelming. <laughs> uh, we did not expect that. And then we had organizations approaching us. Lots of people wanted to do collaborat collaboration work. There's a real, like, there's definitely capacity for this to become like quite a big project. So I'm going to be looking at funding and like create creating a, a, a space which then we can have like satellites of. Um, we really we. Why did you yeah. yeah? Why did you pick the arcades? We picked the arcades because it was very easy and cheap to get into for a short while. <laughs> um, we chose not to stay because the next option is to sign the six years. Oh. And um, the landlord refused to make the electric safe. So we were uh, <laughs> we're looking for some yeah. more <laughs> Next slide. Oh, intended audience and actual audience. So when we were talking earlier, we were talking about how the things that we create and the way in which we create them and the spaces we create them and what sort of is the intended audience when you create an event, when you create art. Thank you, I am an artist. Um, wow, thank you for laughing, how dare you. Uh, <laughs> and like when you create like a business and an enterprise and you have the mindset of like, who is this for? And then you have who actually comes in the door. Um, so can you talk a little bit about when you created Aubergine, who did you think would be the clientele and who actually became the clientele? Okay, so a lot of my research that I carried out was with um, uh, people of the sort of like millennial age bracket and um, who would typically like hang out in cafes with a laptop, you know, using the free electricity and Wi Fi yeah. or whatever. We used to sponge our Wi Fi off Barker's mm -hmm. office. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's how I powered my eyes at the machine. Um, yeah, no, they were fine. They were great. They were great. This is on video. <laughs> Burn your bridges. Burn them all. 
the Iris Rice Film Festival is run by right-wing extremists. <laughs> there we go, I'm burning my bridges. What, they didn't want me on the jury. <laughs> Yeah, can you believe? Yes. Anyway, yes. intended audience. Intended audience. So yeah, so we were, so I was talking to all of these people who were autistic and like, but why, why don't you, why don't you have this pattern? Why don't you go and sit in cafes and so on? And a lot of the same answers came back. It's like, you know, when you walk into uh, a cafe, quite often they've got a commercial fridge. So that's the first thing you hear. You can feel it vibrating through the ground. And, um, and like, like my experience of that is a bit like having, trying to sit down and have a quiet cup of tea on an airfield and having a conversation. It's very distracting and it's uncomfortable and it's like you find yourself pulling faces and you're like, I just really want to get out of here. It's, it's just not a nice experience. So we based a lot of our, uh, like how we were going to present this space on, on this kind of research. One of the things that autistic people told us is that they quite like spaces where they can sit by themselves without the pressure of someone else coming to sit next to them. A really interesting thing happened. After we created that kind of space, we found that we'd have like one autistic person sat there, one over there, and one on another table. One would start talking to me, another would join in. Before you know it, they're all sat together and swapping Facebook like this. It's like by saying that it's okay to not have to talk to people, you've actually opened it up. And so we also found that I think because uh, Frankie and I are both very openly queer, and we talk about trans issues quite a lot, we found that a lot of the like older trans community come and just hang out and chill there. Um, people came to the arcades who would never normally come through that space. Um, lots of young autistic people often find that, I guess, I guess because gender is Quite often, gender expression is something that's sort of like they're kind of social rules. Mm -hmm. And as autistic people, we kind of don't always get social rules. So we're like, eh, what's gender? Eh. So a lot of us find that we don't quite match the, the gender that we were assigned at birth. Um, there's a high, higher proportion of trans people in the autistic community than elsewhere because of that. I think there's research going into it right now. So we found that we've created this kind of safe LGBT space without, without, we haven't had to promote, we just had to be yeah. ourselves, you know? So you made a space for yourself. Made a space that, for myself. Yeah, like <laughs> you made a space yeah. like... You made a space that would be ideal yeah. for me and yeah. other people like me. Yeah. I think it's always, you, it's so authentic, it's like, this is what it is. Autistic, mate. Mm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then it's, that's what people do, it's beautiful. Yeah, is that what you That's essentially it, isn't it? We yeah. just sort of create a thing that we want to see for ourselves and then. Creating sacred spaces. Sacred spaces. Is that next slide? No, probably not. Oh, being a joyful queer is a revolutionary oh, act. Oh, we talked about sacred spaces. Oh, yeah, we didn't. Oh. Do you want to say a sacred, sacred space? Sacred space? Pretend exactly what, there's a slide. It's, it's exactly what Selena was saying. Um, they've then gone and created this sacred space, like this space where we can go. And if we don't have these spaces, then, well, no, these spaces are so sacred to us that we, we can, uh, I'm going to have to look at my notes. You can do it. Just read the notes. So it's like friend finding, and you can bring your authentic, authentic self with all the interse intersecting aspects that make us beautiful creatures to exist. Yes. Can I make a point yeah. about, about okay. this whole intersecting thing? Yeah. So for me, right, I tick so many fucking boxes on the diversity thing. Wait, do you want me on your panel? <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so, you know, black, queer, disabled, you know, all, all these kind of things. Uh, woman, if you like, <laughs> for a tick box. <laughs> Forget a pay rise, aren't you? Um, <laughs> and, but I found that in workplaces, traditionally, I've had to pick one. Because, and sometimes it is because I'm quite sort of like visually a person of colour, it is like that's already been impressed upon me. You are the person of colour in our team. And I'm just that, yeah. It's very difficult then to sort of like say, hmm, let's talk about queer issues or uh, how about the autism thing? Because uh, then you just turn into this person who's like, no, everyone's afraid to say anything in front of you because they say something wrong. And it's like, actually, I just want to be my fucking self. Can you just not be dick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I don't want to come out on Friday, Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching the re run of Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, I just put this. I'm going to talk about me for a minute. No. Do we want me or no? No, come on. Come on. Okay, okay. So this is like like the thesis statement of Cardiff Trans Singers. Thank you. I did found the uh, UK's first trans, non-binary, and gender non-conforming chorus. I am a trailblazer. You can applaud. Woo! Thank you. God, finally getting the respect I kind of deserve sometimes. <laughs> anyway, so our like whole thesis statement when we made the, oh, that was only five minutes, we're doing good. When we made the Cardiff Trend Singers was to make it kind of like fun because like the narrative around queer people is always that we're just like dying in the street and hoping yeah. for a better life. And so we were just like, we're just going to sing stupid songs. We're just going to have as much fun as we can. And we're just, it's going to be a blast every single time. And we're going to try and sneak into as many things as we can <laughs> and hope they don't notice. Um, and take up space. Sure, that's what it's called. Not sneaking backstage. Um, and so like our whole gig and like the whole thing, especially like with my one woman show is just like, like how joyful can I be? Because that in and of itself is kind of like, is not what our entire culture is telling me that I can be. And I think that was something that we just sort of like built our yeah. little choir and we built our little like one woman show off of it. It's almost an act of civil disobedience. Yeah. And I'm naughty. And I would say at Aubergine, we like to disrupt the usual way of thinking. Yeah. We just kind of like, where people would usually do something a certain way, we're like, but you don't have to. You could do it this way. It's better. I know I'm autistic. I've done the uh, research. research. There we go. Thank you. Wow. Run it. Yay! Oh my goodness. And that's that's us. We did a creative morning, but make it night, but make it fashion. And make it gay. <laughs> and we did it.